from Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Social housing provider, the Johannesburg Housing Company, recently launched another sustainability garden, the Lake Success Food Garden in Hillbrow. Jonathan Roden tells us more. JHC subsidiary Makulong Amatsala, together with the Johannesburg Development Agency and non-profit organization Food and Trees for Africa, have launched two successful rooftop food gardens, with Lake Success being the third. JDA marketing manager Susan Munyai explains the relationship between rooftops and food security. Uh, for the city of Joburg, it's very important that we promote food security and in initiatives that um, build food security. And being in, in this area, as you can see, um, there isn't a lot of space where you can actually grow your food. And rooftops become the, the next best thing, and they have been quite successful over the years. The JHC has five similar projects in Hillbrow, Joubert Park, Troyville, Newtown and Fordsburg in Johannesburg comprising rooftop gardens and ground gardens. Spinach, beetroot, onions, tomatoes, cabbage, beans and rosemary are grown on these farms, which provides food supply for the tenants. The Lake Success Project and other similar programs have broadened the horizons of locals by teaching them new ways of obtaining food. Although space has been a significant challenge for the project, FTFA Volunteer Project Facilitator Evold Fulyun emphasizes that the future looks positive as the area of the garden will be increased to improve the project's sustainability. He highlights how the challenges have been tackled. Well the idea has been that we expand the area but we've also said to them look it's technically not correct that you move the garden to your flat but here's an extra seedling or two that you can take down and go and put in a pot in your flat on the windowsill and you'll still be able to replicate what's happening here on the rooftop on your windowsill for yourself on a very small scale. I mean you could in five or six little pots grow onion, spinach, beetroot, possibly a kale or something like that which will mean you've got something green on the edge of your plate at least to put on yourself. The sustainability plan entails tenants growing their seedlings from harvested seeds to limit the cost of buying ready-grown seedlings. I think a sense of unity has come to particularly members in this, this block of flats. Before they were individuals moving around, suddenly there's a reason for them to get together. Other news making headlines this week, Public Enterprises Minister Lynn Brown slams ESCOM's poor generation performance. South Africa's first five-star green industrial building is launched and Johannesburg provides a platform for local firms to showcase their wares to retail giant MassMart. Public Enterprises Minister Lynn Brown has strongly criticized state-owned utility ESCOM for meeting only 57.6% of the 33 key performance indicator targets outlined in its shareholder compact. I note that of the 33 key performance indicators agreed to in 2013-14 um, shareholder compact that ESCOM has only achieved 57.6% of the targets. Now this is not a good performance, even in the challenging environment in which the entity operates. I note in particular the unsatisfactory performance in respect of generation plant performance and the socio-economic footprint, both of which are very concerning. Pump manufacturer Grunfos's Sub-Saharan Africa headquarters and factory have become South Africa's first industrial facility to receive a five-star Green Star rating from the Green Building Council of South Africa. There, there, there are a number of technologies uh, in the building itself, uh, from the materials that are used in the actual construction process, uh, the paint, uh, the carpets, the partitioning, the, the, the ceiling, etc. So the material itself uh, had to comply to, to uh, Green Building Council standards, that's, that's the first thing. Um, from an energy perspective, and that's, uh, that's the most sort of obvious uh, one, the pump technology that we utilise in the building is, is uh, premium efficiency motors, uh, and uh, we're relevant to premium efficiency uh, with VFD drives. Uh, combined again with the renewable energy, so the wind turbines uh, powering up uh, the, the main grid of the building 
uh, and the solar uh, modules powering up the solar SQFlex uh, borehole pump. The city of Johannesburg, together with Walmart-owned South African retailer Massmart, recently held a supplier development exhibition, allowing Johannesburg-based small, medium-sized and micro-enterprise manufacturers to showcase their products to the retail giants. In terms of economic development, you know, this is one of the things we want to do as a Department of Economic Development, really around new sectors that we want to see built into Joburg as a future of the city economy and also the development of suppliers that will be behind those sectors. And I think we've also managed to, to export some of, these, some of these products to other uh, Walmart markets overseas. Uh, for example, there are wines that have found their way into uh, Walmart US stores, into Walmart China and Walmart Brazil, which are South African products. So our intervention, we see it as very powerful. We don't like talking much about it because we're not doing it for publicity stunt. We're doing it because we want these enterprises to be successful. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.